I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the impulse steam turbine. If we try to recall in the last class we have talked about the classification of steam turbines and we had seen that steam turbines or steam turbine can be classified into two different categories. One is one type is impulse type, another type is the reaction type. We have also studied about turbines in the context of fluid machinery or fluid mechanics course and you have seen that the hydraulic turbines also can be classified into impulse and reaction types. So, we have discussed that for the impulse steam turbine, the name itself suggests that impulsive effect is responsible for the spinning or whirling action of the turbine wheel. What is that? So, impulsive you know impulsive effect is nothing but the difference in momentum of jets which is deflected by the blades. So, and that is described by Newton's second law of motion. So, we had seen that this particular type of turbine works on the basis that high velocity jets of water from a flow nozzle you know is directed onto the vents or blades and the when the jets is flowing through the passage between blades, the jets get deflected and there is a change in or you know loss of momentum. So, the resultant you know impulsive effect that that is what I was discussing that due to change in momentum, the resultant impulsive effect impulsive effect you know spins or rotates the turbine wheel and we are getting torque and we are getting output in the form of work. So, let me tell you uh, turbines are basically work interacting devices and we are getting energy output in the form of work, but to get that work we also need to supply certain amount of energy. So, basically the amount of work that we are getting at the shaft of the turbine that is at the cost of some input, some input energy. So, the input energy is, is basically the kinetic energy of jets when that when you know jets of water strike the turbine blades. So, that energy is getting converted into the another form and we are getting work output. So, objective should be to estimate what fraction of that input energy is getting converted into the output energy of course, in the form of work and if we can quantify that we can estimate the efficiency and that is very important. You have studied you know many subjects many other subjects and we have seen that any mechanical component mechanical device when it is designed several aspects are considered for the design of that particular device and one of the most important aspects is the efficiency. So, again while a designer is designing an impulse turbine he or she must be careful about the efficiency. So, that means we need to know what is the amount of work that we are getting at the shaft of the turbine and that work output we are getting at the cost of some input energy. So, to do that analysis we need to know little more about the impulse turbine and that is what uh, the topic of our today's class. So, let me tell you once again that uh, before we go to discuss about that analysis 
let us first draw the schematic depiction of this particular type of turbine and from there we shall try to draw the velocity triangles because without knowing the velocity components you know rather the working principle in a more you know deeper way it would not be possible to understand about this energy transfer process. So, it is it is convenient to uh, draw it is convenient to establish that particular energy transfer mechanism or it, it, in, in, the, in the form of you know mathematical expression if we can draw the velocity triangles. So, first let us draw the schematic of the impulse turbine. So, if we draw and so this is the first row of moving blades or blades and this is the first row of nozzle or fixed blades. So, though we have drawn here only one nozzle and two blades because we need to know the passage between two consecutive blades. We are you know interested in analyzing the working principle in a more deeper way and, and that too we are interested in to know about the velocity components. So, the these two rows constitute together to form a stage and that is the first stage say. So, these are these two rows constitute together to form this stage. And what we know, you know that say this is the velocity of steam which is entering into the nozzle. So, steam which is coming out from the turbine now is entering into the flow nozzle and as I said that steam turbine is basically assemblage of you know the row of fixed blades and row of moving blades or blades. So, that steam which is entering into the you know first row of moving you know fixed no fixed blades or nozzles and that steam is essentially coming out with a higher velocity and that is how the nozzle is or nozzles are designed and that velocity is say this is C 1. So, that C 1 is the exit velocity C naught is the velocity of steam entering into the nozzle. C 1 is steam velocity at the nozzle exit. Okay. And the nozzle which is striking the blade or blades at an angle say this is alpha. So, this angle is flow angle or alpha. So, this alpha is the flow angle. And after striking as we have discussed that you know after striking the turbine blades 
at a velocity c 1 with uh, you know and that steam will come out from the blade say at a velocity c 2. So, c, c naught c 1 c 2 these are the velocity absolute velocities. So, these are the vector quantities, but I am not going to write over work for the ease in the representation rather for the sake of the convenience in the representation. Now, C 2 that is the steam velocity at the blade exit. Okay. So, now we shall be drawing the velocity triangles, but before we go to draw the velocity triangles, let us now look at the you know kind of uh, this blading arrangements in a more clearer way. is not like this. So, I can draw it okay. and So, if I now hatch these two blades, okay, and So, this is the right and this is the mean diameter d m. Okay. So, we have drawn two consecutive blades and we can see that the steam which is coming from the flow nozzle. So, this is the flow nozzle and steam is entering with a velocity c 1. So, this is c naught and steam is eventually coming out from the blades with a velocity c 2 right and this we can understand the two diameters. So, this is d t and this is d r. So, this is basically root and this is tiff and you know that tiff diameter and root diameter these two diameters are not same. So, to calculate the velocity of the blade we have you know 
marked here mean diameter and the blade speed the blade speed v b is calculated pi d m n by 60, where n is the r p m and this is basically blade height. So, this is h b. So, h b equal to blade height. So, what we can see? We can see this is the typical arrangement, this is the typical arrangement of blades which are mounted on the wheel of the turbine. This is flow nozzle, so this is nozzle. So, steam is entering into the flow nozzle with a velocity c naught, steam is coming out from the flow nozzle with velocity c 1 and that is definitely higher than c naught and that is the inlet velocity of steam, the, the velocity of steam at the inlet of the blades and after doing certain amount of work, steam is coming out with a velocity c 2 from the blades. So, now we have seen here, this is the arrangement and when steam jets striking the turbine blades at an angle alpha that is the flow angle. So, now with this understanding if we try to draw the velocity triangles and these velocity triangles are very important to, to, to know the energy transfer process or mechanism. So, let us briefly discuss about the velocity triangles and to do that if we say consider a single blade. And So, this is the V B and V B is same. So, this is V B this is the nozzle. So, this is the absolute velocity of steam leaving the flow nozzle and entering into the blade passage that is C 1. The blades are rotating with a with with you know that is what we had seen in the last in last slide that this wheel is rotating. So, naturally blades are rotating at a speed you know which is uh, n r p m. Okay. So, blades are rotating uh, what we can see from this schematic. So, since blades are rotating relative to the blade velocity we can have rather we, we shall have uh, the relative velocity and that is w 1 and this is the flow angle alpha 1. So, the suffix 1 is used to denote quantities at the inlet of the blades. Similarly, this is C 2 that is the absolute velocity of steam leaving the blades and since blades are rotating, so relative to the blade velocity this would be the absolute velocity and we can draw the velocity triangles. So, blades or this particular blade is rotating with n r p m. So, what we can see that this blade speed corresponding to n r p m can be written pi d m n by 60. So, 
we have calculated based on the mean diameter and that is why I had mentioned the need of this particular mean diameter. So, the blade speed is same since the blade speed is same we can you know superimpose this inlet velocity triangle and outlet velocity triangle on a common VB that is the blade speed. And if we do this, so I am writing We can do that because VB is same. So, if we try to draw the common velocity, you know, rather if we try to draw, if we try to superimpose these two velocity triangles on a common VB, so this is VB. This is C2 and this is W 2 sorry this is C 1 and this is W 1 sorry. This is C 1 this is W 1 and this is V B and this angle is alpha 1 right. Now, we shall superimpose the outlet velocity triangle here so this is c2 this is w2 right so you know that we have drawn now this angle is beta 2 that is the blade angle at the exit and if we draw here. So, this angle is beta 2 and this angle is beta 1. So, this angle is beta 1. So, beta 1 and beta 2 are the blade angles at the inlet and exit of the blades, right. Now, from this you know uh, superimpose velocity triangles next our objective should be to know about the rate of work done by the jets on the blades. So, basically you know that st steam which is coming out from the flow nozzle with a velocity c 1. So, if we know the mass flow rate of steam we can calculate what is the kinetic energy of steam jets leaving the nozzle and striking the turbine blades. At the cost of that input energy, our next objective should be to quantify the output energy in the form of work because essentially we are getting uh, we are we are we are getting work output at the shaft of the turbine. Now, to estimate that quantity, this superimposed velocity triangles, you know, are very important. So, what we can understand, you know, that You have seen that. So, 
So, basically this is known as C theta 1 and this component is known as C theta 2. C theta 2 and C theta 2, C theta 1 and C theta 2, these two are the velocity components in the tangential direction. So, component of absolute velocity in the tangential direction is C theta 1, component of exit absolute velocity in the tangential direction is C theta 2. So, if we consider absolute velocity at the inlet, the component of that absolute velocity in the tangential direction is C theta 1. Similarly, component of absolute exit velocity is C 2, I mean uh, C 2 is the you know absolute exit velocity, component of that velocity in the tangential direction is C theta 2. Now, this delta C theta equal to C theta 1 minus C theta 2. So, the change in you know or the difference in uh, tangential component of absolute velocity is responsible to produce you know tangential thrust and that thrust would give rise to the torque and we will be getting work. So, this quantity is very important to estimate the work done by the jets on the blades. Similarly, if you if you if you look at carefully, we still can have this particular you know component and that is delta C A that is C A 1 minus C A 2. What is C A 2? This is C A 2 and this is C A 1. Similar you know similar to what we could define all component that is C theta 1 and C theta 2. So, let me write C theta 1 and C theta 2 these are known as solved component of velocity. In some books these velocities are also known as world component. So, change in solved component of velocity is responsible to produce tangential thrust. Similarly, the C A 1 and C A 2 the these two are the component of absolute velocity in the axial direction right. So, component of in the axial direction and you can see that C A 1 is not equal to C A 2. So, the difference in the component of absolute velocity in the axial direction that is delta C A that is still there and that component produces axial thrust to observe you know what we can see I mean you also can draw it to observe the you know uh, I mean we can draw the velocity triangles and by drawing velocity triangles we can see what would be the magnitude of this component delta C A. So, this difference in axial component I mean uh, component of absolute velocity in axial direction can be observed if we draw the velocity triangles properly uh, you know at per scale. What I would like to tell you this particular component you know is there and that component 
is responsible for the axial thrust that would be you know absorbed by the axial thrust bearing. So, basically the turbine should be mounted you know the, 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 the turbine you know the, the wheel is mounted on a shaft and when it is mounted on a shaft that axial thrust bearing should be there to absorb this axial thrust. Whereas, this delta C theta that is salt component. So, the difference of salt component is responsible to produce tangential thrust. So, you know let me tell you two important uh, angles here because that would be useful to you know. Uh, so, if we try to draw the value you know angles in a clockwise then this angle is gamma that is the exit blade angle that is nothing but 180 minus beta. So, if we try to draw if we try to draw the velocity you know uh, if you try to draw the angles in the clockwise direction gamma is the exit velocity you know exit blade angle and that is nothing but 180 minus beta 2. Similarly, we can also have another angle if we try to uh, measure the angles in the clockwise direction and that is uh, this angle delta. So, delta is the angle made by the exit absolute velocity of steam leaving the blades with the plane of rotation of the wheel, while this alpha that is the you know flow angle that is the angle subtended by the nozzle axis in the direction of rotation of the wheel. So, these two are important. So, let me tell you this gamma equal to 180 degree minus beta 2 and this delta is the angle made by the exit absolute velocity of steam leaving the blades with the plane of rotation of the wheel. So, with this understanding that means, we could identify three different velocity components absolute velocity. So, let me write here you know C is the absolute velocity of steam W is the relative velocity of steam and V B is the blade velocity. The absolute velocity would be there because steam will come out from the flow nozzle with an absolute velocity c 1, but still the you know turbine is all turbine blades are always rotating. So, relative to the blade velocity steam which would be you know impinging on the blade that is the absolute velocity with an absolute with a, with a relative velocity w 1. Now, with this understanding what I said is that tangential thrust that is p t. So, that is due to the change or difference in salt component of velocity right. Now, if we try to look at the inlet velocity tangle. So, let me write here from inlet velocity tangle what we can write? It is very important you know that inlet velocity tangle. So, this delta c theta equal to c theta 1 minus c theta 2 right. From inlet velocity tangle we can write that is let me draw the inlet velocity tangle once again.
this angle is beta 1, this angle is alpha 1 and this is C A 1, this is W 1, this is C 1, this is V B. So, we can write you know that C 1 cos alpha 1 minus V B equal to W 1 cos beta 1, right. We can clearly write. So, this component is W 1 cos beta 1, right. So, we can write this, we also can write you know we also can write C 1 sin alpha 1 equal to W 1 sin beta 1, we can write right. So, from this we can write that tan beta 1 equal to C 1 sin alpha 1 by C 1 cos alpha 1 minus V B, very important. Okay. This C theta 1 and C theta 2, so you can understand that c theta 1 is basically component of absolute velocity in the tangential direction that is nothing but c 1 cos alpha 1. So, this is c 1 cos alpha 1 and if we try to draw is uh, the outlet velocity tangles. So, if we try to draw the outlet velocity triangles, right. So, uh, we can draw it. this is V B right, this is C 2, this is W 2 and this angle is beta 2 and this angle is delta that is what we could define. Delta is the angle made by exit absolute velocity of steam leaving the you know blades with the plane of rotation of the wheel and this angle is beta 2. So, we have drawn this is the beta 2 that is the blade angle. Of course, if we can draw the angles in the clockwise direction then gamma would be the blade angle you know exit blade angle. So, 180 minus beta 2. So, what we can write here you know that this is the outlet velocity triangle, what we can write? We can write that C 2. So, this is V V and this is C theta 2. So, C 2 cos 180 minus delta plus V B equal to W 2 cos 
W 2 cos beta 2 W 2 cos beta 2 that means, we can write V b minus C 2 cos delta equal to W 2 cos beta 2. If we are expressing the you know if we are measuring the angles in the clockwise direction then it would be V b minus C 2 cos delta equal to W 2 cos 180 minus if we see 180 minus gamma because beta 2 is equal to 180 minus gamma therefore, minus W 2 cos gamma. So, just I am trying to write the expressions that we can get from the velocity triangles because uh, these you know expressions will help us to estimate about several other you know quantities. Now, what is C theta 2? C theta 2 is equal to C 2 cos 180 minus delta that is minus C 2 cos delta. So, that is you know C 1 cos alpha 1 minus C 2 cos delta. So, I can write now I can complete it this. So, this is now coming C 2 cos 180 minus delta. So, that means, it is coming C 1 cos alpha 1 minus C 2 cos delta. So, this is the delta C theta 2 and what about axial thrust? This axial thrust that we had written over here if we go to the next slide. So, you know that C 1 cos alpha 1 minus C 2 cos delta C 1 cos alpha 1 uh, and uh, C 2 cos delta 2. So, C 2 cos delta we can have from this also we can have C 1 cos alpha 1 from this expression. So, you know that C 1 cos alpha 1 minus V is equal to W 1 cos beta 1 from there we can calculate what is C cos alpha 1, C 1 cos alpha 1. Similarly, C 2 cos delta that we are getting from this expression. So, knowing these two expressions we can quantify what would be the change in solved component of velocity and that particular component is responsible for the tangential thrust. So, this tangential thrust if we try to write P t equal to m s into delta c theta. So, this m s is mass flow rate of steam. If it is mass flow rate then it should be m dot s, but uh, it is mass flow of steam. Similarly, we can have axial thrust P a that is m s into delta C a. So, we can quantify these two quantities while the tangential thrust is responsible for the uh, you know work output that it will produce torque we will be getting work output the axial thrust should be also important equally while someone is designing the impulse turbine because this thrust should be absorbed by the axial thrust bearing. Okay. So, now if we try to quantify what is P t, so we can understand to estimate the work output from this particular energy transfer process, this P t is important and P a is also important, but this since this component is not giving any you know work or any energy output rather this component is important because the axial thrust bearing should be designed accordingly. So, that uh, this axial thrust can be absorbed otherwise it will uh, this particular thrust will lead to several mechanical issues operational issues. So, P t equal to m s into delta C theta and this is m s into we had seen that C 1 cos alpha 1 minus C 2 cos delta right that is what we have expressed. Now, see this C 1 cos alpha 1 minus C 2 cos delta 
So, if we go to the previous slide, we can write C 1 cos alpha 1 is equal to W 1 cos beta minus plus V B, while C 2 cos delta is equal to V B plus W 2 cos beta. So, this is one way of calculating this expression. Also, we can write this P t equal to m s into delta C theta and this is m s into just if we try to look at you know that uh, if we go to the previous slide wherein we have superimposed these two velocity triangles. So, basically you know that w 2 cos beta 2 plus w 1 cos beta 1 is equal to delta C theta. If we try to look at this you know superimposed velocities what we can see that this this total I mean this is nothing but w 2 cos beta 2 plus w 1 cos beta 1 right. So, as if w 2 cos beta 2 this plus w 1 cos beta 1 would be equal to delta c theta. So, if we try to write here that is also equal to w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 2. Now, while you know impulse turbines are designed, impulse turbines are designed in most of the cases wherein blades are symmetrical. So, that means beta 1 equal to beta 2. So, blades are symmetrical in most of the impulse turbine that implies beta 1 equal to beta 2. If that is the case, we can write this is m s into w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 1 right. See let me tell you, you know that if we go here when steam is entering into the blade passage and leaving the blade passage this w 2 and w 1 these two you know relative velocities are not same. Though we are calculating the blade speed with the you know average or mean diameter based on the mean diameter these two relative velocities are not same and it is due to the friction that the steam jet will encounter while passing through the passage between two blades that also depends on the roughness of the blade. So, the roughness of the blade surface that will provide a resistance to the flow of steam while passing through the passage between two blades and it is because of this reason you know w 1 is not equal to w 2. So, w 2 is always less than w 1 and the ratio of these two uh, you know relative velocities. So, relative velocity of steam you know the ratio of relative velocity of steam at exit to that at inlet is known as blade friction coefficient. So, we can define that blade friction coefficient that is equal to k b equal to w 2 by w 1. So, what is this? So, this is the ratio of relative velocity of steam at exit to that at inlet ok. And we can we have seen that these two velocities are not equal because steam while passing through the passage between two consecutive blades will have you know will you know face resistance and that will come from the frictional uh, you know effect. So, that is uh, roughness of the blade passage blade surface. 
So, k b is not equal to 1. So, we can write from the, this expression that w 2 equal to k b into w 1 right. So, we can write this x quantity again. So, we can write this p t equal to m s into w 1 cos beta 1 plus k into k b into w 1 cos beta 1. So, what we can do? We can take m s into w 1 into cos beta 1 into 1 plus k b. So, w 1 into cos beta 1 we are taking outside the bracket and we can write this and w 1 cos beta 1 this quantity can be written you know that is what we have already established this expression. So, w 1 cos beta 1 is nothing but c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b from the inlet velocity triangle. So, if we write here so that is nothing but m s into c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b into 1 plus k b. So, this is from the inlet velocity triangle. Okay. So, try to understand our objective is to express this you know tangential thrust in terms of blade velocity, flow, flow angle and also the blade friction coefficient. So, you know that since W 2 is not equal to W 1, there is always a loss of energy due to the due to the friction of uh, you know due to the friction while steam is passing through the blade passage and that is nothing but W 1 square minus W 2 square by 2. So, that is known as loss of energy. So, the input energy, so when steam jets you know come out from the flow nozzle and striking the turbine blades, a part of that energy would be utilized to overcome the frictional losses and that is the that is due to the that is that is due to the you know uh, roughness you know surface heterogeneity of the blades, roughness factor most importantly. So, if we go one step further then we can write that P t equal to m s into c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b into 1 plus k b. So, this is the axial thrust right. So, this is not axial this is tangential thrust. Okay. So, what is work done? So, what is work done? That is work done by the jets on the blades. So, this is work done by the jets on the blades. I should write rate of rate of work done by the jets on the blades. So, that is nothing but P t into V b right and so this is the work output. So, this is work output and we can say this is the energy output in the form of work right. So, that is output energy in the form of work. What about input energy? So, input energy equal to half m s into c 1 square because this is the absolute velocity of steam leaving the flow nozzle and striking the turbine blade. So, if m s is the mass flow rate or you know mass flow of steam then we can write this. So, from these two quantities we could express the work output that is considering the energy transfer process representing the velocity triangles both at both at inlet and outlet of the blades and from the from this analysis we could write this is the work done p t into v b. So, that would be nothing but you know 
m s c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b 1 plus k b into v b right. So, this is the expression that we can write uh, and from there now what we can do? We can define, so this is the work output or energy output in the form of work and this is the energy input. Certainly, these two quantities are not same, you know if they are same then efficiency would be 100 percent and that is not possible because we all have studied about thermodynamics. So, this is not I mean these two quantities are not same in fact you know that we also have studied in thermodynamics that work is high grade energy and energy you know heat is low grade energy. So, basically you know we are supplying heat to the boiler and at the cost of that input energy we are getting this work output. So, suddenly work that we are going to get at the shaft of the turbine should not be equal to the input energy that we are supplying through the you know uh, steam jets. So, we can estimate the efficiency and that efficiency is known as blading efficiency or diagram efficiency. So, blading or diagram efficiency you know this is called eta b or if it is diagram efficiency eta b eta d. that is nothing but the rate at which work is done by the jets on the blades. So, that is you know P t into V v and that is the input energy that is half m s C 1 square. So, if we try to write this, this eta b or eta d equal to we can write m s into C 1 cos alpha 1 minus V b into 1 plus k b into V b divided by half m s C 1 square. So, we can write one step further that means, we are getting twice V b into 1 plus k b C 1 cos alpha 1 minus V b divided by C 1 square. So, this is the expression that we can write and if we go one step further we can write this is uh, if we take out V b outside and if we write twice V b square by C 1 square into C 1 by V b cos alpha 1 minus 1 into 1 plus k b. So, this is what we can write. What we can see that we can see the ratio of you know V b by C 1. So, we can write we can write this is cos alpha divided by V b by C 1. So, we can write a ratio V b by C 1 and that is known as that is known as velocity ratio V r. So, this V b by C 1 is known as velocity ratio and V r. So, we can write this is V r. Okay. So, if we express V b by C 1 as V r, then we can write eta d or eta b like this eta b or eta d that is twice into V r square into cos alpha 1 by V r minus 1 into 1 plus k b right. So, we can write that is 2 into V r cos alpha 1 minus V r uh, V r square minus V r square into 1 plus k b right. So, what we can see that we could write this is the diagram efficiency or blading efficiency that this you know expression gives us 
an estimate about the energy transfer. So, what fraction of the input energy is going to convert it uh, in the form of useful work that means, we are getting at the shaft. You know I, I cannot say that is useful work because the work which is available at the shaft may not be available in you know uh, real applications because there will be several other losses like you know you know frictional losses, bearing losses etcetera, etcetera. But at least we can see from this expression that what would be the fraction of uh, what fraction of input energy would be converted into the work. Now, what we can see that this blading efficiency or diagram efficiency is a function of flow angle, blade friction coefficient and most importantly the velocity ratio. So, there must be an optimum value of here for which this diagram efficiency or blading, blading efficiency should be maximum. So, you know alpha a 1 is fixed because it depends on the designer k b basically blade friction coefficient because it, it, it cannot be equal to 1, but ideal situation would be that if we can maintain somehow, somehow k b equal to 1, but at least this v r that is you know v b by c 1. So, basically why C 1 is important because the nozzle steam jet which is coming out from the flow nozzle and striking the turbine blades. So, there would be certain amount of loss of energy. So, that means, what would be the optimum speed optimum velocity ratio for which this you know uh, efficiency would be maximum. If we do this that is you know d eta b by d v r equal to 0 right. If we make it, uh, I can write it because it is function of v r as well as alpha and k b. So, I can write like this delta v r equal to 0, then we will be getting v r will be equal to optimum, v r will be equal to v r optimum. and that is cos alpha by 2 cos alpha 1 by 2 and if we plug in the optimum value of v r into the expression of eta d then we can write eta d max or eta b max equal to 2 1 plus 1 plus k b into cos square alpha 1 cos square alpha 1. So, what we can see that we could establish the expression of blading efficiency or diagram efficiency and we had seen that the blading efficiency or diagram efficiency is function of speed in you know, velocity ratio flow angle and also the you know blade friction coefficient. Just to obtain what would be the optimum velocity ratio for which the efficiency would be maximum and we had seen that the optimum value of velocity ratio is cos alpha 1 by 2 and plugging in the value of this here in this expression we had obtained that this is the maximum efficiency or maximum diagram efficiency or maximum blading efficiency and that is nothing but 1 plus k b into cos square alpha 1. So, what we can conclude from here is that you know that if we reduce alpha 1 then efficiency should be maximum. So, if we can reduce the flow angle at the inlet then efficiency or blading efficiency or diagram efficiency can be maximized, but if we reduce the flow angle drastically there will be certain amount of loss of energy and that and and to maintain a balance between the loss of energy and maximum efficiency this typical value of alpha 1 is 16 degree to 22 degree. So, the if we can write that if alpha is less or alpha is small, alpha is smaller eta d will be higher. So, this is what we can see from this exercise, but we cannot go beyond this value because otherwise instead of having maximum efficiency there will be a loss of energy even at the inlet uh, of the blades and that is why this you know the value of flow angle is maintained within this uh, in this range. Okay, to summarize today's class we have discussed about the 
you know uh, energy transfer process in an in, in inside the impulse turbine and from there we could you know uh, explain the velocity triangles mapping the velocity triangles on a common VB we have tried to estimate about the tangential thrust which is responsible for the work output and finally, we could express the blading efficiency or diagram efficiency and the we had seen that this particular efficiency is function of several you know uh, parameters and from there from that particular expression we had established the optimum velocity ratio leading to maximum or maximum diagram or blending efficiency. And finally, we had seen that the recommended value of alpha for which efficiency will be maximum without inviting extra loss of energy at the inlet of the blades. So, with this I stop here today.